Welcome back. What is intentional communication? Intentional communication is a body of proven mindsets, models, and strategies, we call them actions, that transform meetings and workshops into meaningful experiences. Based on the neuroscience of learning, motivation, and behavior change, these actions they equip you and empower you to consistently receive more of the results that you desire. The team and I here at Centerpoint Leadership have gathered what we have discovered to work best when communicating as a presenter, as a trainer, as a speaker, as a teacher, as a leader. This might sound crazy, but we actually believe, like with our whole heart, that meaning and value and satisfaction, they can happen at every meeting and every workshop for those who attend them and for those who lead them. To be intentional is to determine to act in a certain way, meaning we're conscious about what we say, how we say it, and its impact on others. The amazing part, you and I, we can create that. Becoming intentional in our communication, it's an internal four-phase process that moves us from being semi-conscious about what we say and do, to conscious about what we say and do, to being intentional about what we say and do. Here's a quick look into each phase. Phase one, presence. What did I just say or do? We become aware of what we say and do. Awareness requires being present, not allowing our words and our actions to go into autopilot. Phase two, discernment. How were my actions and words received? You know, we, we notice the impact of our words and actions on others all the time. There are indicators, there are like clues. We can see people's facial expressions, their body language. And sometimes we can even get a sense of how well our message is landing. Here's an axiom worth holding on to. The meaning of my communication is the response I get. So what responses are you receiving from your communication? Disagreement or agreement? Discord or collaboration? Disinterest or inspiration? And phase three, congruence. Were my words and actions aligned with who I am and what I value? You know, have you ever said, wait, that, that's not what I meant to say, or that's not really who I am, or maybe even that's not what I intended. Anytime you and I think or say those statements, it's our congruence calibrator, letting us know that we are incongruent, that our words and our actions are not representing who we are, what we value, and what our true intention is. Phase four, creation. What words and actions do I consciously create so that my message is received in the way I intend? Intention is defined as a determination to act in a certain way. Being intentional is volition. Intention is the creative expression of our will. And our will is choosing to act in accordance with a certain way. Meaning that we are conscious about what we say, how we say it, and its impact on others. And again, the amazing part, we can create the certain way. All right, so let's, let's check in. How intentional are you? In your day-to-day -day interactions with coworkers and colleagues and friends and in your meetings, presentations, and workshops, are, are your words and actions on autopilot? Only to be examined maybe afterwards or if at all? Or are you present, discerning, congruent, and purposeful? Take a moment to simply choose a percent, 10% to 100%. Here's the scale. 100% is unconsciously competent, meaning 
I have habituated my ability to be intentional in my communication. I choose my words and actions to accomplish my intention, and that comes naturally. All right, 50% is consciously competent. Most of the time, I'm aware of the impact of my communication, and I make some improvements. 10% semi-consciously incompetent. Oh, you, you mean what I say and do actually impacts others? I hadn't really thought that I could choose what I say and do. So take a moment, choose your intentional communication percentage. Well, whatever your percentage, you can now experience the law of 1%. It's a law followed by high impact people. And like gravity, it works with every person, everywhere, all the time. It states, a 1% improvement is a 100% gain. Well, how is this possible? Right, well, we, we can look at it this way. The distance from 72 to 73 is a distance of 100%. If it was only a distance of 50%, then we'd go from 72 to 72.5. The law of 1% also has a corollary. A 100% gain requires 100% effort. It takes 100% of your energy to take the next step that will really make the difference. And if you want the improvement that you're seeking, it's an all-in investment. Yoda said, try not. Do or do not. There is no try. The modules in this mini course, the actions that will be coming up, you'll be able to integrate those into the way that you communicate. Each action is simple. No master's in communication or PhD in neuroscience is needed. Each action just simply makes sense. Every action is powerful. These communication actions, even though they're simple, they're going to make a huge difference in the way your message is received, remembered, and implemented. And these actions are doable. You can master them within days, if, if not a whole lot sooner. So I'll see you in the next session where you'll learn the significance of reaching inside your participants' minds so that you can create greater rapport and credibility. All right, I'll see you there.